just no There's one. no telling why you're not in the is erased. Amen. I'm not the same man that I used to be. Praise God. Praise God. What an awesome God that we serve. Amen. God's in this place. Let me just share something with you. When you play country music backwards, you get your home back, your wife back, your dog back, your truck back. take the life of a God-fearing man and woman and you play their life backwards, you get nothing but the blood. Amen. There you go. Amen. Because my past has been erased. There's nothing to look back over, nothing to look back to. It's all gone. It's all under the blood. Amen. So when we worship the Lord, let's just remember that, that you know what? My past is erased. There's nothing to go back to. Praise God. Amen. Let's worship the Lord today. Praise God.
the name of the Lord. God, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy. Praise God, praise God. Such an awesome presence of the Lord here today. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Amen. Brother Josh needs a touch from the Lord today. Amen. Sister Jamie's not here, needs a touch today. Andrea Vina needs a touch today. God knows it needs.
Just seek him a little longer. The presence of the Lord is very thick in this house right now. What an honor to have his presence move in this place and fill this house with his glory. Thank you, Jesus. We seek you, Lord, because you are the mighty God. We worship you, Jesus, today because you are the almighty. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask that you put one mind in this assembly, one more concerted effort, that all of our minds would be upon the Lord. I'm going to ask that you don't ask God for anything, but that we would collectively and united worship him because he is God and God alone. Would you just do that right now? We glorify you, almighty God. We honor you, all-powerful, almighty creator of all things you own it all you created it all nothing exists outside of you we worship you because you are the one true living God Lord you have always been you always will be you were from the start to the finish you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords you don't have to ask someone to borrow it you create it and manufacture it you don't have to ask permission from anyone else to rule your world. You are the mighty God. You are all-knowing, all-powerful, almighty Jesus. We glorify your name in this place today. We lift you up in this place today, God. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. Just begin to celebrate. Just begin to celebrate right where you're at. We're fixing a shift. We begin to celebrate the name of the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow, there's such a strong presence of the Lord in this place this morning. Amen. Let's remember those. I want us to quickly go to the Lord in prayer. The names that we have called out, we've got several families that were detoured because of flooded waters. We're not able to get here uh, this morning. We want to hold them up in prayer that God will strengthen them throughout the week. Um, unspoken request across the assembly the Lord knows about these needs um, what do we bring these needs to the Lord we bring him Lord to you we present them to you every request that is mentioned prior and now God we ask for the help of the Holy Ghost to move God that you would minister and meet the needs of your people Lord in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we give you glory and we give you honor for what you are doing, God. Open up our minds and our hearts today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Our ushers, just bring the pans here. After service, you can put your offering and your tithings in the offering pan. Um, what, a, what a presence of the Lord. Let me say it's, it's an honor to see each and every one of you. In the house of the Lord, if you'll give me just a few minutes, I'll send you on your way basking in the phenomenal presence of the Lord that will continue to linger. If you will entertain it, it will linger. If you will ignore it, it will uh, find itself not to be manifested in your presence. I want him to be manifested among me in the name of Jesus. So just one more time, lift up your hands and ask God for direction. I need the wisdom of the Lord. I need the wisdom of the Holy Ghost in this place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
I recently read a few days ago of uh, Israel anointing a Messiah. I don't know if you've seen that, that there is a man that is quoting, he has memorized, whether he has photographic memory, he has memorized the Torah, he is able to quote scriptures throughout the word of the Lord. He is manifesting himself in proclamation of being uh, the Messiah. He is received among the Jewish people as being the Messiah. They are thronging to him by the thousands, but he is not the Messiah. The Messiah done came 2,000 years ago and was crucified. He was nailed to an old rugged tree to bear my sins. <laughs> Amen, to buy me out of damnation, to wash my sins white as snow. You better know the word of God because you will be deceived. You're living in a world where they can project things in the sky now, and it looks real. We are living in the end time, friend, but I'm glad that I'm serving the beginning God, the middle God. And the ending God, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the God that created everything. He's a God that never fail. He doesn't have to ask permission to use power or to borrow things. He manufactures it. He creates it. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we worship. And he's got a name that's above all names. At the name of Jesus, every knee one day will bow. It doesn't matter what they profess. It doesn't matter who they worship. It doesn't matter who they serve. One day, amen, they're going to bow down their knee and profess that Jesus Christ is God Almighty. Woo. Man, wow. I'm glad I know that I know that I know who he is. Amen. I may not per be perfect, but I know that I know who he is. I may, I may lack a little education in some areas, but it ain't in knowing who he is. He's the mighty God. I said he's the mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the everlasting Father. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. Amen, amen. When I understand who he is, it is easy for me to comprehend uh, the discourse of these Five verses that I read to you, this will not be a sermon today, this will be a practice. And I don't mean practice that I'm practicing preaching on you, I just don't know what we're going to do today, but I have a few uh, assignments, I won't be long, uh, I'm not going to preach all that I had prepared to preach, we'll just follow the leading of the Holy Ghost, Matthew chapter 7 and 7, amen, you cannot wrap your mind around the depths around the application that Matthew is pinning when he is in the presence of a mighty God. But when you understand who he is, then you have the permission to utilize the scriptures accordingly. When you read these passages of scripture, they are not to be taken out of context. There are a collection of other scriptures, the dangers of pinpointing and elevating one passage of scripture is that there are numerous other scriptures that must be in agreement with the scripture that you are trying to make a doctrine out of or a message out of. Ask and it shall be given you. I like that part. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh receive it. That is signed, sealed, and delivered. Ah, you didn't get that. I, I, got a, I got a little amen corn over here, but I don't know where the rest of you are. Amen. I said it's signed, sealed, and delivered. If he said it, I believe it. If the word of God said it, he's going to stand behind it. Amen. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. There are the three avenues of life that you and I need. And the solution is found right here in the word of God. The Bible says in verse 9, Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Hmm. If ye then being evil know 
how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask Him? I have a very complicated title today that you will have trouble uh, being able to wrap your mind around the title. I apologize for such a congested title, and it is this, Ask. Ask. Turn to your neighbor and say, Ask. Lord, we need you today. I pray that you would help me to do a quick work, accomplish what you have set out to do in this place today. In Jesus' name, and you may be seated. 100% of the time, the things that you don't ask for will not happen. 100% of the time is accurate. You cannot get what you do not stretch yourself to receive. Many careers are derailed because some folks refuse to ask. Relationships are abandoned because he didn't have the guts to ask that pretty young lady out on a date. Businesses don't start because we as people fail to ask. Ministries are never launched. Number one, we do not ask for help. Number two, we do not ask for opportunity. Number three, we don't ask for permission. Invitations are never extended because you have not asked for their help. Help is never granted because you have not said, hey, I'm preaching to me right now. I need some help, Brother Tim Walburn. It's okay to need help. Items are never received because we simply have not ask for that item. You have not because you ask not. Permission is not granted. New endeavors are walked away from. Goals are forgotten about. Bible studies are never taught. Folks never come because you do not ask them because of fear of failing. We in our society that we are a part of have taught that failure is humor. We laugh when someone mispronounces. You laugh a lot at me then. We laugh when somebody falls. We laugh when somebody is in an embarrassing situation that they made of themselves. We laugh when somebody is even in a painful situation. Because we have in our society, there we go, I, I, I got a stutter, in our society learned to laugh at people's mistakes. It also has branded our minds to maybe take a few steps back instead of asking. We are afraid if we ask that something opposite than what we are seeking for would happen. We are afraid that they would say no. We are afraid that they would laugh at us. We are afraid that they would try to embarrass us. So in our society, we have let the majority of people that really have not really succeeded very much in life other than live. And we have allowed them to impress us to where we are secluded from the realm of success. We have allowed ourselves to sweep in the presence of God. We've allowed God's presence to come into this assembly. The Shekinah glory has permeated this building today. God has breathed in this place his power and his might and his strength. And I want to worship him. I want to continue to worship him. But I want to tell you, he's a God that said, I need somebody to have enough confidence in me that they're going to ask me for something. I need somebody to quit walking around in their bitterness and their doubtfulness and looking that they are willing to knock on the door that it seems impossible to open. But they're going to say, I'm going to keep knocking. I need somebody that's going to say, God, I'm going to seek you. Amen. Today, and I'm going to seek you tomorrow and I'm going to seek you next week. Hey, friend, 
man, if you want something great from God, it's probably going to take you a little longer than a week to seek God about it. Because God wants to see, is it just something that's just passing or is it something deep down in your spirit? And when you get something deep down in your spirit, God, I want revival. I want revival. I'm on year 17 fixing a turn and I'm still praying for revival. I'm serious about revival, God. I'm not taking no for an answer for revival. I'm knocking for revival. I'm asking for revival. I find that little children don't know how to receive the answer no. You ever wonder why a child comes to you and they ask for the cookie in the jar and you tell them no and then they might take a step and then they re-ask the same question for the cookie in the jar and you do the same thing. You tell them no, and they'll wait a little bit longer, and then they'll ask for the cookie in the jar and ask again for the cookie in the jar. And not because you want them to have the cookie in the jar, but to hush them because they're not going away. They're not going to leave you alone. You give them the cookie in the jar. They have not learned that they can receive the answer no, and no is permanent. They are growing up. That We've got to become like a little child and know that the answer no is not permanent in our relationship with God there are ministries that God wants us to get involved in there are outreaches that God wants us to get involved in there are giftings that God wants us to get involved in there are elements in our lives that God wants us to get involved in there are businesses that God wants us to start I preached that many many years ago and now we're seeing it come to fruition but you've got to be there asking God you've got to keep trusting God you've got to keep knowing that God's going to show up you got to believe that God is on your side. God's not against me. God's not looking down on heaven and saying, oh, there he is again. I hope he fails. I hope he makes a mistake. He said, you ask me, you're going to receive. He said, if you seek me, you're going to find. He said, if you knock, it's going to be open unto you. Now, either God is a truth-telling God or he is a liar. I want you to think about that for a while. Daniel sought the Lord and in his relationship to giving God his allegiance. He is praying and seeking. And uh, we learn a very valuable lesson because 21 days of asking God and there's not much going on. He's praying, he's fasting, he's believing God for the answer because that's the God that he serves. And he asks according to the will of God. And he asked for something that wasn't going to entertain him. He asked for something that was going to benefit the kingdom of God. And so he is waiting for God. But in his perplexity and in his place of becoming a little distraught because of his position of prayer, uh, day 21, and there's nothing happening. The angel comes to Daniel and uh, he, he reassures Daniel that there was not a complication on the asking. The asking machine did not break down. The, the asking machine was fully functional. It was plugged in. It was operating correctly. But what had happened is he wanted to let Daniel know while he took a little break from war, apparently, uh, he, he got Big Bubba to come in. Gabriel comes, and Gabriel's fighting with the prince of the air, and he's warring, and I guess he just took a little time out and come down to where Daniel was and said, Hey, Daniel, just want to let you know, uh, God heard you the first time you prayed, and he sent you an answer. Just kind of got caught up in a spiritual warfare up there. But Gabriel, oh, oh, Gabe's up there, and he's battling that out. Matter of fact, I think I might need to go back and help him. And uh, whatever happened, it took him a little while to get his answer. You find around chapter 10 that he prays another prayer and it took absolutely no time. He received his answer immediately. Sometimes your answer is on delay. Sometimes your answer it takes years. Sometimes it takes a long, long time to get what you need. But I want to tell you today that not every time you ask that you are prepared to receive what you're asking for. And so when you're asking God for some things, he needs to put you in trial. He needs to put 
you in training. He needs to put you in learning. And because we've not received it yet, maybe because we've not learned what we're asking for and we've not gotten all the information we need, there are some things that we can receive from God that will destroy us if we are not prepared to handle the blessings of God. See, you've got to get the blessings for God for yourself and know that they're for the benefit of the kingdom of God. The blessings of God are not for us to enter be entertained or enjoy all of it. And so when you look at the scripture, ask. Somebody shout out, ask. I, I, I don't want to go through all of uh, my notes, but number one, you need to ask. Number two, you need to have faith. If you ask and you don't have faith, you're asking, machine is broke. It's not broke in heaven's part. It's broke on your part. You ever had internet and uh, the company made sure that the internet was in uh, going to where you are at, but in, in your residence that the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi box may have been uh, contaminated. The module may have had some malfunctions. And uh, the inter- there was no problem with the company getting the internet to you. The problem was where you were at to receive the internet. And when you start fixing the problem on your part, amen, the thing that was already sent to you, you can receive. Amen. So you got to have faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to have faith. <laughs> Number three, you got to seek God's will over what you're asking. He gives us a structure, a parameter, when we are asking God for some things in life. God, if I, if I was to receive a Rolls Royce, or a Lamborghini, of course, I'm in the car business, so you would know it wasn't for me to enjoy. It would be just to resale and find somebody that's got a lot of money that they need to pay me a little money out of it. But if I was not in the car business and I was getting this car and that car and just wanting to, to fill my ego up, uh, then, then that may have not been the will of God. If I, I was trying to impress other people, that is not the will of God. If I was wanting the gift of God and ministry of some sort upon my life that I can impress you or, or have my name called or have my name in some brochure or have my name uh, broadcast over some uh, big meeting somewhere, then my intentions would be completely wrong. But if my intentions are in alignment with heaven, if I want to own a business and I want it to be blessed and I want it to be beneficial and financial, I need it to bless my family. I need to provide for my family. I need to be able to take care of the health and the wealth of my family. But I also need to know that that business was not just for me alone. And I need to make sure that, that, that there is more than just that getting blessed. And so the kingdom of God, you need to find out where you are going to bless God at. Amen. If you're just looking that you can up one on somebody else or you can get a a little bit more square footage home or you can get a nicer car or you can get you a longer vacation or you can have this big old cruise somewhere and there's nothing wrong with all of that. But your priorities need to be in the right place. You've got to seek the will of God. Let me say it again. You've got to seek the will of God. Number four, you've got to be obedient to God. Amen. You can't ask God to load your wagon and bless you with all of these great things in your life. And uh, when it's all said and done, you're not doing what God wants you to do. You're not listening to God. You're not following God. You're not asking God to order your footsteps. So you've got to be obedient. Number five, in order to receive what you're asking for, You've got to be persistent. One time is not one and done. If you want it bad enough, if it is interesting to you, if it is important to you, don't start asking for no babies just yet. You've got one to take care of, so let me finish. You've got to have the obedience of your pastor. I'm telling you to be obedient. Don't ask for no kids right now. I don't want to be no grandpa just yet. I'm too young to be a grandpa. You got to be persistent. (laughs) Coming before God. No, I I don't think I want to. Well, I'm coming back again today, God. No, you you, you need to find the art of knowing. I I, I read. Uh, I hope you do too. 
but uh, some of the literature that I have read in the past. Uh, matter of fact, one book that I'm reading now, uh, How to Go for Stupid. Well, I, I pick some intelligent books, don't I? <laughs> How to Go for Stupid. Uh, the guy figured out that, that he was asking, and every time he was asking, he was getting a particular response that he was not gaining from. He was wanting to get some uh, information that he could process and use, and he realized that if he would change how he would word his question of asking, that he would get a different outcome. Finally, when he realized that he was asking some of the right, but not all of the right question, to get it where people were comfortable enough to release the information to him that he was seeking to better his life, that when he done that, he would go to different people and he would get all the information that he needed. Maybe we need to learn how to ask. Maybe we need to learn how to frame up uh, what we are asking for in the kingdom of God. There are things that I want to see if the Lord tarries. I, I'm okay if he comes tonight. I'm going to say it again. I'm okay if the Lord wants to check us out of here tonight. I hope you're ready, but I preach to you enough. You should be ready. Amen. I hope you're ready. But if the Lord tarries and he waits a little while to come, I want to believe that God is going to do some great things. And so I look across this congregation, and uh, there are some things that I have been asking God for over 16 years for. There are some things that I am bringing before the Lord over 16 years. I have been asking, seeking, and knocking. I have not wavered. I have, I have put my money where my asking was. And uh, we are pushing and trying to get to where God wants us to be. What are you asking God for? Is it that you are coming to church and letting whatever happens, happens? And it's like the old boy said, if I don't have a target, I never know if I hit it or missed it. So a lot of the times we come to church without a target, without a purpose, without a reason. And we do not know if we've accomplished it or not. Let me blow your mind if you would allow me to use that verbiage today that most of us have come today to have a move of God. Be all right. You're not sure what to do. You can clap. That's all right. That should be a given. We ought to come every time we gather in the house of God. We ought to come to feel his presence. We ought to come to worship him. We ought to come to praise him. But when that segment of the service is concluded, there needs to be some evidence afterward. Because if you only come to seek God and to worship Him, but you are not receiving anything other than just feeling good, we become almost like the drug addict on the street that goes to the crack house. He gets his fix. He feels good for a little while, but it loses the effect, and he's got to go right back and get the fix. Nothing ever changes in his life. Now, I applaud you that you're not using crack and that you're worshiping God. But when you come to worship God, you ought to get some instructions from God. When you come to worship God, you ought to get some direction from God. When you come to worship God, when you come to the house of God, you ought to leave this place with something that you can make application with in your life. You ought to be able to have something. If you're not praying and you're wanting to expand that, something ought to have happened in that service that would cause you to want to leave and not just say you pray, but develop a prayer life. There ought to be something that says, you know what? I didn't understand what the preacher preached on that text. Never heard it before. Something ought to get in your spirit that would challenge you to leave the house of God, open up your Bible, and read it. That way the next time that somebody preaches on those lines, that you would know exactly what they're talking about. To study to show thyself. You are making a mark and you are aiming to hit the mark. When we come to church, we know that God wants to use somebody. So if God wants to use somebody, 
who does God want to use? Well, he's going he's gonna to use somebody on the platform. Nah. He can. He, he does. He uses that. It's an authority set up. He uses that. But God uses people in the pews. God gives you a word for somebody else, and he doesn't give it to you for you to hide it, to conceal it, for you to bury it. You've got to learn to operate what God is doing. I felt tongues interpretation, and I ignored the, the first time on purpose because I tried to let other folks get involved. But when there is a time that passes that people do not respond and God comes on me again, then I will act upon what is what God is trying to do. You see, church is more than just going through a ceremony. It's worshiping God. It's enjoying the presence of God. It's feeling the strength of unity among ourselves. It's singing unto the Lord. It's dancing or unto the Lord. It's worshiping God in our offerings. Those are all biblical. But are you receiving? The Bible says that the word of God goes forth. It breaks down strongholds. It goes into tough ground. And it loosens the ground so the seed can go in it and begin to produce a crop. Amen. A lot of times we come to church and we're not worried. We, we listen to the word and that's a good word and that's good preaching. But we make no application to it because we cannot find a place where it fits. Could it be that God is tilling the soil? Could it be that God is breaking up and loosening up some things in your life that when the seed does come that it can manifest and it can grow, that it can blossom and that it can bloom? I want to tell you that God wants to answer your prayers. I want to tell you that God wants you to find what you are seeking for. I want to tell you today that God is willing to open a door that seemed to be blocked up, that seemed to be barricaded, that seemed to be no way to open. But when you begin to tap into the Spirit of God and ask God, what can you do, Lord, for me? I'm seeking you for your will. I'm seeking you for your help. I'm seeking you for your guidance. It's at that time that you start asking God. If you're not receiving from God, that what you're praying about if you've not received from God that what you have been praying about then I ask that you would be encouraged today to make sure that you're asking for the will of God make sure that you're in obedience make sure that your heart is right as we stand this morning and I may or may not be finished with my message How many has ever done a job and got paid for it outside of your, your job? Like a second. Like somebody said, look, I want to hire you to come in and you do that. Let me see your hand. Just, I want you to come in the front. Come on in the front. Hurry then. I just feel instructions. How many of you are business owners? You have a business. Maybe it's a side gig. Maybe it's a primary. I want you to come. Just kind of move close to that. We're probably not going to have anybody left in a minute. Just kind of move close, close. How many of you would like to have maybe a second gig? Or maybe own your business, maybe start it, maybe consulting, whatever, whatever your expertise, I want you to come behind. I want you to come, but if you would like to, to, to do something, but you're just not sure, but you felt that you'd like to own a business, come on. If you have a job, I want you to come behind them. I'm, I'm layering y'all right now. See, I got the business folks because I need to get their money, but I need to build a barrier behind them so they don't escape. <laughs> How many believes the word of God? Ask. And what's going to happen? Ask and 
seek. Knock. Now y'all are awesome. Y'all paying attention. Let me try this again. Ask. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to put I. Shall receive. I. I. Ask. Seek. Knock. Somebody said I messed up my grammar right there. <laughs> See, I didn't give you time to phrase that up real good, did I? That's okay. Nobody was listening but Jesus. I want the presence of the Lord to move in this place right now. God's going to take this, this church in the next five years if he tarries to places that will supersede our vision. And he got a long way to go because I got a crazy imagination. But he can't take it there without taking you somewhere. stories like this in the next year because the church the church needs a lot of money and we have the church has good money but to finance the vision we don't but we will we will Lon, where, where's London I don't want to use her again she, she don't mind any I told you I, I was preaching Tuesday and I told you that, that she obeyed God and done a little something. She is still getting financial blessing from one small token of obedience and sacrifice. I don't want you to think that the church is about money. You can, you, you can go look in the tithings account. It, it's fat and fluffy, so I don't take, I, I, I take a very small portion. But in case you didn't notice, land's going up, buildings have gone up. And so I'm going to ask God right now for something crazy. Because I don't want to insult God with the miraculous. If, if, if your business is just barely making it, I'm going to ask you to pray that God double it, triple it. But I want you to listen. I have taught this principle to my, my girls because I'm not, we, we don't have, I'm not a wealthy man, but we have no financial struggles whatsoever. We live a very modest life, but that woman, your pastor's wife, uh, make sure to that we're modest. I like to be a little extravagant. And uh, those of you that don't know, uh, she gets so mad at me. I'm going to say it, baby. I'll, I'll quit soon. I'll, I'll quit. She said, no, I won't do it. Okay. I got to obey you. We're, 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 we're together, so I won't say it. But make room for God when he blesses you. Is that, is that okay? Is that okay? Would you make room for God? And so while you're asking God, God's already got it on, 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 on the desk. But maybe before he sends it to you, he may just want to try you. Somebody said, Pastor, when I get a million dollars, I'm going to give the church $100,000. Pastor said, well, what you going to do with the 100000 you got now? It's easy to give what you don't have, right? Sometimes God will try you. Sometimes he'll try you. I'm going to tell you again, God's going to take this church in some incredible places. But they're going to be stretching. to lift up your hands right now and I want to pray for you. Light represent our business.
business. Wanda, God's going to bless your business. jobs come, let the greatest prophets come, Lord, as they get an earnest way, an earnest job done with great talent, I pray that you would bless this business, God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the cloches, in the name of Jesus, I, I ask God that you would open up, that you would open up, that you would bless this business. Lord, I, I pray that you would move over this family, that you would send clients. Lord, let there be not only, Lord, an act of work, but let there be relationship, a witness, and yet for financial gain to bless this family for their needs, but bless the church as well. Lord, I pray for Sister Gianna right now. Lord, that the doors that have just been opened, I pray that, Lord, you will begin to use that you will begin to bless, that you will use her for your glory. Lord, that you will lead, that you will guide. Lord, I'm asking right now, Lord, every every second job, every second gig, Lord, I pray that you would increase. Number one, increase the wages. Number two, increase the opportunity, God. Lord, because we're opening up our minds and we're asking you for the blessings, God. Lord, I pray your blessings upon every family, every laborer that goes to, job, to the job and they dedicate themselves to the company. And Lord, they draw that paycheck. I pray the anointing of God touch that paycheck. I pray God that you would bless it, expand it. Lord, let their bills be minimized. Let whatever they need to buy be bought with a bargain. I pray, Lord, that you would increase their, bless their financial blessing. I pray, Lord, that you would give them raises and promotions. And God, we call upon your name right now. Every family we're asking today, God. Lord, every family we're seeking today. Every family we're knocking today. Lord, Lord, I pray that not only in the work field, but I pray in the ministry. I pray that you will bring laborers, Lord, that you will bring Bible study teachers. I pray that you will bring Sunday school teachers. I pray, Lord, that you will bring soul winners. I pray that you would grow our youth group. I pray that you would bless our children's ministry. Lord, we're going to fight and we're going to push back. We are asking of the will of God right now. We're asking for the blessings of God in the name of Jesus right now I claim it uh, I wish somebody would throw up their hands and said I believe it I receive it uh, I receive it today I'm going to get my blessing but you're going to obey the Lord I'm going to walk in the steps of the Lord I'm going to walk in the ways of the Lord I'm going to find the fulfillment of God in my life in my ministry in my job in my calling in the name of Jesus Turn around and pray for somebody's business right now. Pray for somebody on their job right now. Find somebody to pray with right now and invite the blessings of God and begin to rejoice. Ah, oh, that's it. Begin to rejoice right now. Begin to rejoice right now. Lord, that you will bless. Lord, that you will promote. That you will open up doors. That you will open up windows, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let our cores get better fuel economy. Let our insurance drop. Lower premiums, God. Lord, let our interest rates be minimized, oh God. Lord, I pray that our grocery bills, Lord, will be minimized. That you will help us to be good stewards in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 oh we love you Jesus we love you Lord we love you Lord we love you Lord This year coming, 
this year coming, we're not going to brag on us. We're going to brag on God. And God has done some mighty things for our family. But I, I refrain from declaring it because I didn't want anybody to think that I'm bragging. But I'm at the point where I don't care what anybody else thinks. I want God to get some glory and some credit. This coming year, we're going to get up with our poster. It might be every service or it might be once a month, but we're going to proclaim what God's doing. You know what's going to happen? Number one, your faith is going to rise. Number two, you're going to give God the glory. He's going to receive honor for it. Number three, you're going to encourage somebody to have faith to pray prayers and ask God some things that they can be used in the kingdom of God, that they can be accessible to the kingdom of God. We want to have revival, church. Bottom line, we want to be the church that you have called us to be in Prairieville. We want to be able to offer up the blessings and the trainings that you need for this city. You ought to just celebrate with a shout right now. Come on, faith. All right, hold on. Let me, let me, let, let, let me have a little, yeah, there we go. Faith is the thing that I want to see, but I have not touched it. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Other words, what I'm asking God for, I don't even see it. I can't touch it. Oh, come here, sis. I, I, mm, I feel it. Oh, I don't want to embarrass you right there, right there. You work too many jobs. You work too many jobs. Huh? Lift up your hands. God's going to give you a job that are going to match the other jobs. You ladies, come on. Lord, this precious lady doesn't need to be laboring all these jobs to make ends meet. Lord, I pray that you would get to her, Lord, the invitation. God, to let her make the wages she deserves to make and let the blessings come. Lord, that she can have time to enjoy her walk with God. That she can have time to enjoy the people of God and her own family. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I don't, I can't touch it right now, but I'm believing you because you're an own time God. Lord, I don't see it right now, but I'm believing you because you've always come through. In the name of Jesus, open up the windows of heaven. I'm gonna ask it, Lord. I'm gonna ask it, Lord. I'm gonna believe it. In the name of Jesus. place today I want you to leave out of this place and evaluate what's your bullseye because if you've come to church today and you just left didn't we have a move of God today but we gotta let the move of God affect us when we leave this place and analyze and how we can apply God wants to do. That's how we start growing. Thank you for your power and your might today, God, and your blessings. I pray you receive this offering and tithings in the name of Jesus. Let your blessings be upon your people, Lord. I pray that you would touch our minds. Put that helmet, Lord, of salvation over our minds, our thought patterns, the breastplate of righteousness over. Protect our hearts this week, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.